Newsflash, everything that glitters is not gold. Hey, what's up? It's Dara, real estate investor, entrepreneur, and consultant out of Atlanta, Georgia. And I wanna welcome you to my channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're true. If you are not new to my channel, then you might've seen the video about a day in the life of a real estate investor. You guys came along with me. I was super hyped. You guys were super hyped for me about this smoking hot subject to deal that I locked up under contract. It was great. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, take a second, take a couple seconds, go watch it, catch yourself up and come right back to this video. So I got a confession to make. My yeah, so um, here it is. I learned a really, really big lesson in real estate investing, and I want to share it with you guys because why not? So the lesson that I learned is that when it comes to being a wholesaler or an investor, you really have to wear several different hats, goggles, and shoes what on earth am i talking about so when i say different goggles hats and shoes so shoes you know they're all the same thing but you have to put yourself in the shoes of someone else you have to put on the lens of someone else and you have to put on the cap or the hat of someone else and by someone else i mean um a cash buyer or an end buyer a homeowner um so just to make it all make sense i got this deal under contract subject to was the way I acquired it. And um, you always wanna have multiple exit strategies. So my plan A exit strategy was to lease option the home to a tenant buyer and make a killing. So what had happened was not that. So fast forward to plan B, C, D, F, G, the property is now going to be listed on Airbnb. And the reason that that was like plan G and not B or A was because it's a huge house, it's far away from me, and it's just not something that I wanted to put money into furnishing and all that other good stuff. So, um, but it's great to have multiple ways out of a deal. So you're not really stuck. It's not the same amount of profit that I thought I would make and that I really anticipated making why I was so hyped in that video. So what I want to just share with you guys that kind of were some setbacks for finding a tenant buyer in the time frame that I thought I should have had people beating down the door was that I didn't walk into that home with the lens or the vision of a homeowner, someone who was going to live in the house and essentially that's who my target audience was. A tenant buyer is, yes, they're a tenant, but they are also um, in a category of becoming homeowners. So one of the biggest uh, feedback that I was getting from everyone who went to go see the house was that the kitchen was way too small. So it's a five bedroom house, um, almost 3,500 square feet, huge, huge house for entertaining and all that kind of great stuff. Again, go watch the video just to see the tour of what it looked like. And when I went there, I was kind of just more so in awe that is like, okay, granite, stainless steel, nice, nice, whatever, hardwoods. Yeah, let's lock this up, sub subject to, it's, it's great for me, you know, a little money down as opposed to cash and all that other stuff. So a lot of people were going to the house and they're like, oh, it's a beautiful house, I love it, lovely, lovely, great, but the kitchen's just so small. So the first person who went about and said that, I was like, hey, well, maybe they just have too big, big of a family. I get it. They did say that they wanted to host for holidays and that kitchen was just not it. So the more and more people said that, I realized that, you know, certain objections that you get, you can't change. They said, oh, you're asking for too much in rent or, oh, this and a third. And I did get that objection as well that, you know, the rent for the area or for the home, it should be this. And unfortunately, I just couldn't make it that low because of what the mortgage is. So back to the objection or the feedback about the kitchen. That's just something I can't change um, or I'm not willing to change as far as going in and knocking down walls and renovating the house. That's just not going to happen. So in a situation like that where you can't change, sure, I can adjust the rent. And I actually did adjust the rent um, price. Other than that, I can't, I can't change the kitchen. I'm sorry. So... 
Um, what I realized is that someone who won't complain about a kitchen is somebody who is there for like a weekend or a week or so, you know, not somebody who is going to live there and I guess eventually make it their forever home or their first home. So, <sighs> never fear. Make sure you just have backup, you know, make sure you have multiple exit strategies. Definitely heed to the feedback of others because it's not always hate or it's not always you know something negative and you what after maybe the third or fourth person said the same thing i was like okay well maybe we got to kick it into high gear to to plan b c d whatever so um that's kind of where that is i definitely wanted to just make that update video and of course it's about me but i also want to make sure that it's helpful to someone else out there because i did make a video on why your rental is still vacant or why your wholesale deal doesn't sell um so those things do apply and um, so if it's something that you just absolutely can't control or can't change, your strategy should change. So hopefully this video makes sense. Hopefully this video helps someone else out there. Um, so if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, comment below, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.